So I'm going to talk about how clear content can make living in San Francisco possible. In 2017, I moved from Los Angeles to San Francisco in, in, to a work on affordable housing. I told all my friends that, and, I, and then I also always said, yes, I know that there is no affordable housing in San Francisco. <laughs> but that doesn't mean there aren't people trying to change that. So the Mayor's Office of Housing and Community Development, or MOCD, is, is, is doing just that. The people there in, 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 in envision an equitable and diverse city where all residents can afford a place to live. They offer financial help for people who need it for stable housing in San Francisco. So if you build it, the people will come, right? Unfortunately, that doesn't quite work out if information about how to access those programs, how to use those programs, is hard to understand. Now, that's where I came in. Uh, my job at MoCD was to restructure the content on the website so that our applicants could understand it. For something as complicated as buying a home, most people will need all the help they can get. So uh, one of the programs I worked with was the Down Payment Assistance Loan Program, or DALP. The program was for people who who are considered middle income, who just need a little bit of a boost in their down payment when buying. And this was the original DALP page. So you can see all the way down. If you have worked on government websites, if you have been to a government website, this kind of page should look very familiar because it's a program page and it will tell you everything anybody would ever want to know about the program. And I do mean anyone, which means applicants, lenders, realtors, staff members, policymakers, reporters, as well as the general public. But unfortunately, if you wanted to apply for this program, how would you do it? And it's not very obvious, and that had to change. The fact of the matter is language is access. If you don't understand how something works, if you don't understand how to use it, then it's inaccessible to you. So one question for the entire room right now. Um, what is the average reading level in the US? Can anybody guess? Seventh grade. Seventh grade? Oh, wow. We got some really knowledgeable people here because it is indeed eighth grade. So that means that um, all the stuff that you learned in high school for your SAT tests, your AP college essays, all of that stuff, most people cannot read that easily. In, 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 in order to write inclusively, you have to throw all of that out the window. But before writing anything, we have to make sure that we understand our user needs because understanding our user needs is the, is, 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 is the best way to improve our content. Now here at San Francisco D D Digital Services, we use uh, user stories that are based on real user research. We use as templates uh, off of gov.uk's recommendation. As a someone, I want to do something so that I can achieve some kind of criteria. Now, after speaking with several home ownership applicants, I discovered that one main motivation for buying over renting was stability. So I wrote the following user story. As a parent, I want to buy a home in San Francisco so that my children can stay in their school district. Seems pretty reasonable. And so, after learning your user needs, you have to know what you're writing about because you cannot write clearly and directly without knowing all of the ins and outs. So one of the first things I did at MoCD was to meet with each housing program manager and draw out their entire service journey on a whiteboard. Um, and, and then after that, I pretty much combined it all into a sheet of paper and I pinned all of these um, to the outside of my cube so that everyone could actually see what we did. <laughs> so as you can see, um, this is our applicant ownership journey. Um, there are at least four steps before you can even apply with all these little steps in between. And DALP is actually right here after you apply. 
after all that. So now that I knew about DELP, it was time to write about it. But how? So when writing inclusively, your mission is to reduce cognitive load. People do not read on the web at all. They skim maybe 20% of what you write. So you have to keep that in mind because you can't, um, uh, you really can't ignore that fact. You can't say, oh, they just didn't read it. It's not our fault. No, it's actually up to us to make sure that we um, um, make our content as easy to read as possible. So here are some tips about how to reduce cognitive load. The, the biggest one that I found is one task or process for each page and for each audience, because the needs of a parent applying for a loan program is very different for, 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 from the needs of a mortgage lender. So in restructuring DELP, so because, because the problem with the original page is that everybody has to read the entire thing, and they're only reading 20% of the entire thing, and they have to guess which, uh, which parts of the page are relevant to them right now. It's a lot of work, and most people will assume wrong because there is just a lot of content. So you have to make it easy as possible to give them the information that's relevant to them. So when restructuring DELP content, I actually decided to break it up into two pages. One for applicants, where it lays out all of the eligibility criteria, uh, steps to apply, and then a giant button to actually apply. And then I had another page that would have all of the loan program details with all the funding stuff and the loan terms that most people wouldn't need to know when they were applying. Next is you have to order your content by priority. That way people don't have to guess what's important. Now, the inverted pyramid is a concept that's taken from journalism. The basic premise is you have to assume that your reader will stop reading your content at any time. And that means that the most important content has to be presented first. You have to group your content by sections and then order those sections by audience size. Now, that is all informed by the original user story. As a parent, I want to buy a home in San Francisco so that my children can stay in their school district. Now, what would someone need to know in order to apply for, 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 for an affordable housing program? Number one, everybody wants to know if they can apply at all. Number two, if they can apply because they're eligible, how to fulfill application requirements such as classes or workshops or, um, or a mortgage pre-approval lender uh, letters. If they are eligible and they fulfill all the requirements, apply for the program. And then some would want to know what to expect after they apply. And then lastly, very few, if anybody, would ever want to know the background or history of the program. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much only if you're a, 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 a policy wonk. So, so, so the basic... <laughs> So the premise of the inverted pyramid is that the number of people who would want to read the content becomes smaller as they go down the page. Now, there are a lot of tips about uh, actually writing out the copy. Now, honestly, th th I have found that once you've structured out your content, you are more than halfway there. But there are a lot of tips about how to write, and here are some that I have uh, found have made the biggest impact. Number one is to be active, because your user has agency. You're not doing something for them. You are empowering them to do things for themselves. So use action verbs like apply for this program versus down payment assistance loan program application process, which feels stilted and isn't very actionable. And, um, and, and um, use active voice over passive voice because it's shorter as, 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 as well as more actionable. Number two is to think short. Now this is always a process that I'm going through. I'm always shortening what I write. One idea per sentence, 15 words maximum. 
less than three sentences per paragraph, use subheadings every three paragraphs so, 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 so that it's easy to scan, and use bulleted lists as much as you can. And lastly, write like you talk, because when people write, they often use bigger words than they would use otherwise, or longer sentences, because they want to sound smart, you know? But unfortunately, that confuses people. So our, our standard at digital services is a fifth or sixth grade in reading level, uh, using Hemingway Editor at HemingwayApp.com to check your writing. Now, we don't always get that low, but that is the goal. So the original Dell page was a grade 11 reading level. That whole wall of text was a grade 11 reading level. And now the new Dell page is grade 7, which is a lot better. It's not grade 6. It used to be before we uh, started to add a little more detail back in. But, but it's, 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 it's a really important to push it as low as possible before I could go Government starts creeping back into the process, because <laughs> it does. So what happened after all of my restructuring and rewriting? What was really interesting was that um, even before the DALP application due date, we saw some results for, 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 from the improved content. Uh, the 444441, a NISF Chronicle article actually laid out all the LGB criteria that I had already written in an article which was really amazing because this had never happened before. Um, what, it, what usually would happen was that they would have an article listing all of the down payment loan programs from banks, from lenders, and then, hey, MoCD has one too, and they would link to the really scary long page, which would confuse people. So it turns out that improved content can, can help reporters do outreach on your behalf, which is a win-win-win in my, in my view. So the improved content uh, did make a difference in the end, um, because in 2017 we had 198 applicants up, 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 apply for DAO successfully, and in 2018 we had 266, which is an increase of 34 percent. And now I'm going to take off my city badge and talk about why I think all of this is important as a general concept of designing for inclusion. There goes my city badge. <laughs> Woo. So even today, um, people who own their homes have wealth built to their family for generations. And decades ago, our government purposely made it much harder for families of color to buy homes. And that's called redlining, which is a whole other topic, a whole other talk by itself. But the thing is, because of that, generations of non-white families are poor through absolutely no fault of their own. That opportunity was stolen from them. Now, now in, 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 inclusivity doesn't mean that we are leveling the playing field so that we can reach some kind of diversity quota because that assumes that everyone has received the same training or is using the same gear, but that's not the case. For people who are visually impaired and couldn't access websites along with a lot of other things, that opportunity was stolen from them. For people like Zach Anner, who has the rebel palsy, he couldn't play video games until the Xbox adaptive controller came around. That opportunity to have fun like everyone else, that was stolen from him. Now, not all of these examples have villains or are purposely evil, but we still have to make things right. Now, fighting for inclusivity is fighting for justice. Just like the superheroes we know and love, rest in peace, Stan Lee. Now, think about how you can be a superhero on your own work tomorrow. How can you design something to be more inclusive, to, to give people those opportunities back and make things right? Because that is the reason why we are here today. Thank you.